Hello everyone, my name is Godohandus. Today we're going to play Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We're going to finish a mission on Stealth. The game uh, releases on October 4th. And what we're playing now is part of the beta. And uh, we're going to play the whole mission from start to finish. So, because they've made a lot of changes in the process with the missions. So I'm going to show you how you acquire the missions, how you know where to go, and how you proceed. So right now we're on the base of operations. They have weird names for the bases. They call them Aero 1 and... Uh, they're not easy to pronounce, right? So uh, th th we have they have given us a mission. It says it's on Sinking Country, so it's in the top right uh, province. And then it says it's in the northern part of the Sinking Country, so it's the top part of the of that uh, uh, place. And then it says to go to the northern shore of Gordon's Law. Gordon's Law is one of the lakes over here, so it says the northern shore, so the upper part. So it gives you little clues so that you know uh, where you have to go to proceed with the mission. It doesn't tell you exactly where it is. This is not always. Uh, you, you can set up the, the game on guided mode. And guided mode is going to show you exactly where you need to go so you don't have to go through this process of uh, following the clues and narrowing down where you need to go. Now the game does suggest that you do not play on guided mode. Uh, however, the missions aren't that specific in their uh, description, so I kind of recommend you actually put it on guided mode so you don't waste time. But but this is a preference depending on the person, right? Okay, so we need to go there. It's not very far. Uh, we're going to take the chopper, so I can tell you some things while we're going there. It's not going to take a lot, a lot. First of all, um, the whole thing, the whole game is not as you would expect if you have played the previous Ghost Recon Wildlands. Uh, Right, for example, uh, the game starts, uh, you, uh, you crash here and then you find these rebels in this uh, place, base of operations. And it has like a social place where you talk with other people. So uh, it's not exactly what you would expect. Also, you, it's more of a gear looter kind of game. Uh, people have called it the um, uh, division in the jungle kind of thing. But this is not exactly accurate. So uh, although there is a lot of loot in the game, uh, you don't really need to go uh, and loot, and also uh, the, the gear you have has a gear score. So in division, the higher your gear score, uh, the the more the stronger the gun is. And this is sort of true here. However, I have tried to go to er also the enemies have uh, a score. So uh, an enemy that's twenty level is gonna be stronger than the enemy that's zero level. However, I'm not exactly sure how this works because I I actually tried to take. Uh, level 10 guns uh, to go and take out uh, top level enemies like I think over level 150 or something and you can actually take them out with one shot with a headshot so it's not exactly like division where you would need to empty several clips on them for them to die it seems that uh, bullets to the head tend to kill regardless of how uh, strong the enemy is so yes there are gear scores yes there are enemy scores yes there is loot but it's not exactly division in the jungle uh, now this may change, we're still in the beta, they may make some changes based on community feedback. But it's not exactly what you may uh, think to see by playing the previous game and by uh, what people have said about being a division. It's none of these, it, 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 it's more of a, it's a, a hybrid, sort of in the middle. Also the map, the graphics are kind of weird. In the Ghost Recon Wildlands the graphics were clear, like here they look a bit blurry. Uh, Let's also look at this. So we're going to fly on top of the uh, of this base, whatever it is. The buildings, everything. Everything is very futuristic. And uh, this is not a very good uh, direction they have taken, in my opinion. Because uh, in, in games like these, the target audience wants realism. So the whole theme of the game is uh, uh, like it's in the future. With futuristic technologies, futuristic buildings. There are drones flying around. So, uh, remember when Call of Duty started making out, uh, futuristic games and no one liked it? So, I think that this would have been pretty evident. So, wh why would they take Ghost Recon in this direction? This is not a future soldier. Like, it, I think it would be better to just like make it in Afghanistan or something and with, with modern weapons. Okay, so we've uh, reached the, the uh, beginning of the task. So, it told us to go check this accident. We're looking for a guy. And there's a skeleton here. This is the northern part of that uh, Schlaw Lake. That was the name. So we arrive and we check the that skeleton for clues. And then you open the clues. You see this is the 
the military badge that says something about the typhoon base so uh, and also a russian cigarette pack so these are the initial clues it gives you for the um, for the task so after you've investigated this then it's going to give you more instructions it tells you that um, the code is uh, on the badge and also it tells you that if you want to get more information you have to get, you have to talk to the homesteaders homesteaders are the locals right so apart from enemies scattering them up they're also local people living here this is one of their bases uh, they're sort of uh, some of them are rebels or and some of them are just local people living in the island so we're gonna go over there to ask them for more information based on the badge that we found it's not very far just I'll just take the chopper speed things up also uh, at random points there are enemy choppers that are flying above the map and enemy drones that you have to avoid we'll see if we get any of these okay so th this is one of the homesteader little towns this is one of them so you ask him about hey, the badge that you found in the body for some information found some sort of military badge that reads you want to ask about the military base typhoon 403 does that sound familiar to you any idea where that it you came can access from? with the badge I've been honest with what I know. Thanks, stranger. and they tell you so now you move on it tell, tells you to reach the anti-aircraft ruins so the anti-aircraft ruins it says it's um, south of the typhoon bay typhoon bay is this area and the south part is the lower part right and uh, this is the base now, usually, uh, if, it, if this was dark, it, it wouldn't actually say anti-aircraft ruins, so you would have to go there to check that that is where you need to go. I've already gone there, so that's why I, it actually tells me the name. Right, so now we want to go here. Um, the shortest way to go is either we can take the chopper, but I'll, I'd rather go more in a more tactical way. So we're going to uh, go to the nearest uh, bivouac. We're going to fast travel there. Now, bivouac, uh, it sounds fancy, but it's just a fancy name for uh, the campsite or the checkpoint. Like, every game has a checkpoint. When they say bivouac, it's like they're, they're trying to pretend that this is some sort of innovation. <laughs> no, it, this is just like a checkpoint, like a, you would have on Far Cry or in other games. Okay, we're going to get this boat. We have to go across uh, the lake. Well, it's not a lake, it's a bay. Okay. Those are the ruins, we just go straight. And they have a lot of weird names, they call the base of operations, they call it Aero One, they call these campsites uh, Bivouac, and they have some weird names for the locals. So it's, this is, these are very good choices, overall. These are hard to pronounce, but, but this is the list of the problems <laughs> of the game, overall. Don't get me wrong, it, it has a lot of good things going for it. Okay, so there are some people over there on the left. You can see it on the minimap, it shows you with red uh, where, where the enemies are. Let's go pay them vi a visit. Okay, and this is, uh, the this is a patrol and he also has a drone with him. So the drones are one of the problems with the game. So if you want to play stealth, you cannot play stealth if you have to deal with a drone. You have to. Uh, there is a way to do it, but it's not. A, it's it's not optimal. I'll show you. So this is just one guy here. Who is he talking to? To himself. Okay. So there's one guy and one drone. So again, there's no way to knock out the drone in a stealth manner. People are going to notice. What you can do, the stealthiest option you can do is you throw an EMP grenade. So uh, you can either shoot it or throw an RPG in it or explode it. But the stealthiest thing you can do with the drone is just take this EMP grenade. They don't last very long. It depends on the on the technology the enemy uses. These small drones are just going to fall out of the sky when you use it, so it's not a problem. So we're going to throw the EMP grenade, take out the drone, and before the guy figures out what's happened, we'll just shoot him in the head. Right, so th this is the stealth way to do with the, uh, to deal with the drones. But again, it's not optimal. If you like playing realistic games, you like uh, distracting the enemies and uh, sneaking up behind them, uh, throwing magic grenades is not the is not the way to go, I think. But uh, there are not drones everywhere. You can, there are s uh, several bases that you can uh, you don't have to deal with them, so you could play them as you would uh, play Wildlands. 
right? So if you check the lower part of the screen, it's, it, it's, it has a stamina bar, and when the stamina bar is out, it says you're exhausted. And if you keep running at that point, you're going, your stamina bar is going to reduce in, in, in length. So the edges are going to become, uh, you're going to be able to run for less time. Also, uh, you see here I'm, I'm picking stuff from the floor, just coconut or these uh, blue mushrooms and stuff. They have added some sort of um, scavenger, well, a, a crafting system. So you can pick stuff from the, from the ground, either uh, rocks uh, or uh, different flowers, and then craft uh, stuff to drink in it. So uh, when you're exhausted, to recover some of the stamina, so you can run again, you just have to drink some water. You don't have endless supply of water, you have to replenish the water uh, from, uh, from different uh, clean water sources. Okay, so this is the base in front of us. First thing you do is you go prone so they don't see you and we're going to do a little scouting. This is similar with the Ghost Recon Wildlands. So core elements of the game have persisted, which is a good thing. So we have an enemy here in the... How do you call these things? A harbor? A dock? Whatever. That part of the base is uh, empty. Right, so as you would with Wildlands, uh, you use the drones to recon the bases. First thing that you should do is check the elevated positions for snipers. These are either on um, the edges of the ba most of the bases in these little towers or in uh, other elevated positions. That's right, so there's a guy there in the water tower. There's a guy there in the smaller tower. And then you, you can check if there's someone around them. S uh, second thing you do is you check if there's anyone in on top of the buildings. Usually it's, this is a good way to go, there's one guy over there. And then uh, you just um, check on the big streets, you see, if you check for patrols. So there's a guy, there's a patrol of two guys patrolling this street. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, catch everyone, there's a guy going inside there, there's a guy outside here. Oh, right, so this guy's a problem. This is also another problem with this game. So these are uh, heavy hostiles, right? These, these are armored dudes that have a minigun. On, on. The problem with these guys is you cannot sneak behind them. You cannot take them out in a stealth fashion. And even if you shoot them with a sniper in the face from front, they still don't die immediately unless you have a high gear sniper. You have to shoot them first for the helmet to go away and then shoot them again. So this shouldn't be in a stealth game. Or if it was, it should be very limited, you know, for, for the boss or something. So this is the main gate. We have another one of those heavy guys and a normal guy patrolling. This, this seems empty. Yeah, I think we got most of them. Again, you don't need to get all of them. If you get the snipers and the people on top of the buildings and the patrols, you can move around the base relatively safely and just uh, go room by room and the rooms you need to go and uh, check with your own eyes if there's anyone there. Right, so we've done uh, a little scouting. Where are we? Let's see how we're gonna approach. So I think I'll deal first with the guy in the dock. They can actually see you pretty far away. Depends on the, on the terrain. By the way, when you uh, take cover from objects, you don't need to press anything. It uh, takes cover automatically when you're close to an object. This doesn't work 100% very well, but it's, it's not too bad either. So you see, he goes immediately to the corner. I didn't press anything. Okay. Let's grab this guy. Take him out. Okay. They've made it a bit more violent, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Looks more realistic, actually. So I don't think anyone can see him here, but we might as well just to show the mechanic. You can carry people like you can in other games. They have made it more time-consuming, so it's not easy to take a guy out and uh, uh, take him with you so you can drop him away. Take some time. I'm gonna throw him in the water. Oh, damn it. We fell inside. Doesn't matter. Also, uh, one of the issues for me is that you... In order for you to grab them without them figuring out, you ha actually have to press it. Uh, you ha have to press the grab or kill bu button. Uh, like when you're a meter away, instead, you, when you're if you go closer, they're actually gonna turn around and see you, 
You can still take them out pretty quickly, but uh, it doesn't look very realistic. Okay, so let's try take on, let's start uh, taking out the snipers. Go up here so we can see that guy that has those uh, metal things protecting him. So you can aim down the side and you can see it from a third person. And you should always make sure you have the silencer. Don't see me? Okay, he didn't see me. One guy down. Can I see the other guys from here? He's a bit far, so the bullets do have drop. And I have, I'm not used to the drop uh, yet, so I'll go closer. If you're within 100 and 150 meters, you don't have to aim above their head. But if you are 200 meters and above, it usually takes like a half a centimeter above their head, depending on which scope you have, of course, and which gun you have. Oh, so, okay, so behind that guy in that building is uh, one of the things we need to check. Good to know. Let's get rid of the snipers and we'll come back to that. So when you aim towards a location, it scans if uh, it's close to the objective. Okay, so let's take that guy out. Alright, so there's another guy behind him. If you take them very close, uh, within like a second of one another, they don't have time to raise the alarm and they haven't figured it out. But if the other guy was looking at the body, you would, you would have a problem. I can think there's one sniper left. He's in the other corner of the base. There's a guy below there. If you fire uh, the weapon, even if it's silenced, uh, people can hear you from nearby. I think they can hear you better than they would in the previous game too, so let's go a bit closer and further away from these guys. You don't have to go very far, just, just be aware of it. Okay, so that's... We're done with the snipers. Let's go enter the base from uh, the, from this side. Okay, now we don't need the sniper anymore. Let's take the uh, pistol for smaller, closer distances. Now I'm going to try to play as stealthily as possible. We don't want them to figure us out. We don't want them to raise the alarm. That thing over there is a sort of a drone. It's a, it's a stationary drone. So if you uh, if if the alarm is raised, uh, that thing is going to start firing you, or someone is going to go there to control it. But you can get rid of it. If you go nearby and no one sees you, you, you can deactivate it. And you can also hack it and use it yourself. But again, this is like futuristic stuff that I don't think should be in this game. I don't see anyone. There's one guy in the other room. You can also take off, take out the lights, but uh, he's too close here, you're gonna hear it. Oops. Okay, so I think only these guys are looking here and they're gonna turn around. So let's hack this uh, turret, whatever it is, just so we don't have to deal with it later in case uh, someone uh, raises the alarm. Also scattered around the uh, bases there are some uh, loot uh, crates. This patrol is moving away, they cannot see me this far. So there was a guy on top of this building, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. So we got one of a, a gun, a sniper, and depending, uh, the, the items are color coded. So I think there are five different colors depending on how rare the ga the items are. Again, I don't think this stuff uh, belongs in the game, but whatever. As long as you can kill people with any gun with a headshot, I'm sort of fine with it. Or with a stealth takedown, it doesn't really affect me because that's how I always play. I think they're trying to make the game more accessible to younger. A younger audience, but uh, I think they picked the wrong title to do it. I mean, the game is called Ghost. It has Ghost in the name. It's Ghost Recon. Why would you add fancy stuff in it? It's supposed to be realistic. Right. I don't think we should go that way. 
because there's, there's a heavy guy and I don't want to have to deal with him because he's going to raise the alarm. This way seems safer. Right, let's deal with the guy in the cafeteria first. Has he moved? Nope. Good. Come here. Okay, this is a pretty lit room, so we're gonna carry him away. I could just break the light, but uh, I can see the minimap there is someone that's rel relatively close. I just don't want to risk it. I'm just going to throw him somewhere in the co uh, behind the counter so they don't see him if anyone else comes in here. Right, so there are two three guys on the other side of the wall. You can see from the minimap. Let's go deal with them from the other side. Okay, so there's one guy next to the water tower. Two guys. Oh, oh he, he saw me. Well, he didn't see me. He saw like a shadow or something. And he's coming to check. Through. They can, so they can see through the fence. Okay, that's interesting. We have a lure with us. Okay, so the other guy is leaving. That's good. Okay, so while the other guy is not paying attention, I'm going to deal with the first guy. Hope he doesn't have time to turn around. Good. Okay, now let's go for the other guy. Now I'm not sure if the other guy can see the first guy through the fence again, so I'm gonna be very quick. I'm gonna quickly take him out. He doesn't seem he doesn't seem to know what has happened. Okay, apart from uh, neutralizing them immediately, you can just grab them. This can be uh, a lot better because you don't have to uh, carry their bodies afterwards. You can. Now he's still alive, and he, uh, I have my hand in his neck, so he cannot shout. Uh, so you can just take them when, where you need to, do, where they cannot see him, and just neutralize him there. It's a lot faster this way, but it takes some time for you to grab him. So it can only happen when the guy is alone. Doesn't have a lot. Uh, at least they're not looking at him for some time. Okay, let's go closer to the objective. Okay, so there is a patrol here that we show with the drone. I think they're about in the corner, about to come here. Now let's see how we're going to take this out. We're going to switch the EMP grenade with a diversion lure. So we can grab their attention so they go off the street, theoretically. Okay, so they're over there. I'm going to wait for them in the, in the corner over there. I don't see anyone. Okay. Might as well take out the lights. So it's more difficult for them to see us. I'm not quite sure entirely how much different taking out how much difference taking out the light makes. But it looks cool. <laughs> okay, let them come a bit closer. I'm gonna try to move one of them to the right. Oh shit, there's another guy. Oh, come on. Okay, we're gonna have to take that guy out before he sounds the alarm. I don't have time to grab him. Okay. We have to deal with him before they see him. So we're gonna throw the lure inside the, that little armory, whatever it is. What is this white thing? Okay, so they're looking on the other side, which is good. They're not gonna see the body. Uh, they're both going, so I'm gonna have to take them out simultaneously. Take out the first guy and very quickly grab the other one before he has time to react. Good. Okay, so now we have to hide the first guy before someone sees him from the roof over there. Hope we get lucky. <laughs> he has his hand like, why? Why did he do this? Okay, let's hide this guy. 
Well, might as well take him uh, along with the others in the armory. I can hear someone inside this building moving around. I hope he doesn't see us through uh, like a window or something. Okay, two more. This guy is the most dangerous because he's outside the building. Half his body is outside. Oh, someone was about to see me. Ah, good. Might as well take out the the lights here as well. Okay, I think we're gonna move this guy just to be sure. And then head to the objective. You can't see very well, so let's check the night vision. So this is how it looks, and this is how it looks uh, pretty much day and night, so it looks a bit foggy, doesn't it? I don't really like it very much. We also have a thermal vision, which is pretty good, but the night vision... Uh, I'm not sure if the, uh, the, the, it looks like this because they're trying to make it realistic, but it looks uh, too foggy for my tastes. But you're better off uh, just uh, using your eyes in the night instead of using the night vision most of the time, I think. So, there's a guy going up there. Let's go get rid of that guy before we go to the objective. Oh, so one of the heavy, heavy armored guys. So, again, this is a problem. If it was a normal guy, I could, like, uh, shoot him with a headshot or go uh, grab him, but uh, there's just nothing you can do with those guys. Oh, shit, he can see you through. The floor is uh, like a fence. Like a... I'm not sure how they call these things. Good thing he didn't see us, he would have messed up everything. Oh, he's coming back down. Also, he looked at my shadow or something and he came to check. Let's get rid of him fast. Yes, we are very lethal. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if the other guy, the heavy armor guy, can see him. He probably can. I'm gonna move him a bit uh, to the other corner. So the reason we came to this base was uh, so we, we saw the skeleton uh, in, the, in the beginning. Then we asked the locals where that card we got from the skeleton is from, and they diverted us to this base. And now we came to the base to check for uh, some documents to get some more clues. World War II documents, I think it is. Oh, by the way, uh, this is the generator. Most of the camps have this generator, and you can sabotage it, either blow it up or just press the big button, and all the lights will go out. Uh, however, I think uh, that makes the uh, the enemies more aware. Hello. Good. Let's get rid of the light. Actually, I think there might be someone else because the minimap is still red here, so I'll just move him away. Otherwise, I would have just sh sh uh, taken out the light and I move on. They cannot see him. Okay. Oh no, no, he it was just him. Okay, that was weird. So we can shoot the lights out, no problem. Oh no, there's another guy. Why didn't it show on the uh, minimap? Okay, we took him out. He didn't have time to shout or do anything, so we're cool. Right. So this is the objective. These are some old World War Two documents we have to check. Investigate the badge's origin. So this is a new clue. Let's open up the documents to check it out. So it's a search inquiry on the Typhoon Bay. Okay, so we need to continue now. This, is, this isn't the only one. We need to ch uh, search the base for more documents. Okay, so there's no one else in this building. But I want to show you again in the... Okay, better move this guy. No, I don't think they can see him. Oh, there's a lot of people there, but they cannot see inside, that's fine. Okay, let's go on top, have a better view. Also, like uh, most of the games, there are random collectibles around the map that you can pick up, if you're into that thing. Here's another one of those uh, turrets. Might as well deactivate it. 
Again, these things uh, break the aesthetic of the game as a realistic thing, but uh, if you're just playing stealthily, you never have to deal with them because they never activate. Okay, so let's use the drone. What was that? Oh. Right, so uh, with the drone, if you aim the drone towards the direction that an objective is in, and if you're close enough, it's just going to tell you gonna make an analysis supposedly and tell you to go to that objective. Let's check all the other buildings as well. Okay, so we need to get some more uh, intel from that building over there. Let's make sure we have uh, scattered everyone that's around it. Okay, so there's the heavy guy in front of the first building. There's a guy behind. We should be fine. We'll just go from behind. Move. Oh, you can move that thing? I didn't know that. Okay, the heavy armor guy has left for now. We have this guy. I think I'm covered here from both sides. So maybe we can use a diversion lure to bring him uh, over there in the shadow or something, but I don't think. I don't know if the heavy armor guy comes back and sees the lure as well. I don't see him coming back, but oh, this guy's moving, so we might as well go. We don't have to kill everyone. Like the point of being stealthy is uh, to make a minimum amount of uh, changes of interactions with enemies, I suppose. Okay, this room seems empty. Let's go check the intel. Investigate the origin. We have a new clue, a photo of Mads and Cal, of the two guys. And there's another one here. Let's check the second clue. An unfilled report. That says something about a Cold War. Okay. So. Objective completed. Not the, not the whole objective, just the... So it says Cal was heard from from an old bunker in Typhoon Bay. So around here, there's somewhere there's a, an old bunker in this area. And it says that the homesteaders may know more about the old bunker. So we have to go to the, to the homesteaders, ask them for more information based on the intelligence that we found. Let's get out of here before the... Oh, someone's coming inside. Here we are. Is he gonna see me? No. Okay, I cannot help myself. Let's, <laughs> let's take him out. Okay, we're cool, we're cool. There's just one more guy outside of here. Oh, almost. There's another guy in the other corner. I cannot see him from here. Let's take out these guys and just leave. One guy, and the other one. It's easier to aim with a thermal arm <laughs> than it is with a night vision. Because it's too foggy. Okay, let's get, let's get the hell out of here. So we infiltrated the base, we didn't raise any alarms. We kicked ass and chewed bubblegum. Is that the phrase? Okay, we might as well take their... Uh, Put a little boat here and go towards the homestead to proceed uh, further with the mission. Ask the locals about the, the clues that we found. So we're just going back the way we came towards the uh, bivouac, the campsite over there, and go ask the guys. It's not very far, shouldn't take long. Again, if you... Uh, if you don't want to have to read the clues to find out where to go, you can just uh, activate the guide mode, where it just shows you directly where you need to go. Damn, <laughs> the lights in this boat are not very optimal for stealth. <laughs> I don't expect them to be like huge lights. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't really like the night mode very much. Do you guys like it? The thermal is cool, but the night mode is... Uh, it's not very detailed, I think. Not a lot of contrast. Okay, let's run. So we're trying to find an old uh, World War II bunker. I'm going to ask these guys uh, approximately where in the Typhoon Bay it is. This is cool, you can see the laser pretty cool from the night uh, vision. Oh, are these enemies? No. So these are locals uh, scattered around the map. Sometimes they tell you something or they give you information uh, about collectibles or attachments and stuff. These guys don't speak, so screw them. Let's go to the to the little to the village. Oh, okay, I hear a helicopter. I think. Is it coming closer? Yeah, it's kind of closer. These things can be a pain in the ass sometimes. There it is. So it's not coming this way though. This can really mess you up. You can uh, and the way the helicopters go is very random. And Hello. they can mess up your stealth. No need to fear. <laughs> He's talking to his back. Radiation. Seen anything unusual in the area? I've told you all I can remember. Awesome. Okay, Thanks. so we got information from this guy. He says the vegetation is blight northwest of uh, Skulls Pond. Skulls Pond is uh, this uh, lake thing. Swamp, so northwest is this way. So we have two things uh, northwest. This one, abandoned site, and the other one on top. This is a Cold War site, so it may make sense to go check there first. Let's take this uh, old bike. Although, in the swamp, it may not be the best uh, choice. There are too many places with water where you cannot uh, traverse with the... Oh, come on. I suck as a driver. Overall, though, the uh, vehicles, the helicopters, the uh, cars, uh, etc. are quite easy to use in this game. In the uh, technical beta, they were very difficult to use. And also in Ghost Recon Wildlands, uh, they used to be very hard as well, and then they made it uh, better. Same here. Okay, so this looks like a bunker, like what what we need. What the hell is this? It doesn't look like an enemy, it says. We are summoning the devil. And it has some metal parts. It's like a an art an art installation made from uh, drone parts <laughs> or something. So there doesn't seem to be anything here, it's closed. Okay, so it must be in the other in the other one. Over here, another Cold War site. And there are some people here on the left, where the flashlights are. Let's go check. Is that a drone? No, they don't have a drone with them. That's good. Wow, you cannot pass from here, really. Well, this is a little thing they have to fix. Here we go. Ever tell you my pops was stationed here back when he was in the core? Okay, so there's Sometimes like what two guys speaking to each other. How proud he'd be to know I was here. Proud? Three guys. How you figure? You know, of what we're doing. What's getting paid to uphold martial law while a boss develops new weapons? Okay. Got to do so you can either like throw a grenade in the middle and just blow everyone up. Or you can try and be at least a little stealthy and just like use a diversion lure to lure someone away and kill him or just lure him away and uh, kill the others first. So let's throw it as far as we can. So the white area, the circle is the, the people uh, inside this white area are the people that are going to react. So if I had thrown it a bit to the uh, right, only one of them would go. Although only one of them is going now, but the other ones are looking, so... Okay, we're just gonna switch to the automatic gun. Okay, we already have it, and I'll just take out these guys. I think the other guy's pretty far. Okay, the silencer, he didn't figure out, and now it's his turn. It's pretty stealthy. 
I didn't have time to react, to shout, to raise any alarms or call for backups. And w when they call for backup, you can get uh, drones and... Uh, it depends on the area you are. It can get pretty difficult if they call for backup. And also there's a huge drone thing that, yeah, apart from their helicopters that are scouting the areas randomly, there's a huge drone that is scouting, and when the drone spots you, then you have the enemy wolves, that's how it calls them, that uh, track you down, and these guys are very, very tough. Okay, so let's get the, the boat, we'll go on the other side. I don't see anyone else. We should be cool. Oh, there's an enemy there on the left. The new map is red and there's a little red light. Oh, right, so th that is a special enemy. I'm gonna avoid him for now. Well, you'll see later why. So, we found the bunker. So now we need to investigate what happened to Cal. This is one of the soldiers. That's not an enemy, is it? No, okay, so these are locals. Let's see if they have anything to tell us. Any information to give? Any items? No? Okay. So, we found the bunker. There's another body in here. Let's search. Investigate the skeleton. Look, the skeleton looks too clean. Could have made it more worn out. He's got a ring, a ring on his finger. Okay. So, we found Cal. The guy we're looking for, he's dead, long gone. There's a key card here. Investigate what happened again. A new clue. Key card to an unknown location. It has the radiation symbol on it. And the military academy ring. This is we took that from the skeleton, the ring. And if you check, see the photo, he's wearing the ring. So that's how we know that that, that is uh, Cal. And there's another clue here on the wall, some sort of a blueprint. I'll take some pictures of some device. An explosive device, whatever. Okay, so now it just says that we should go back to the base and talk to the head guy. But before we do it, I want to show you about those uh, special enemies I told you about. The guys that were... Uh, had the red light on the left. So this is one of the other problems with the game. Apart from the dr apart from the futuristic drones and the heavy armored guys, you have uh, these uh, drone uh, tanks or whatever they are. Ob obviously, you cannot take this out uh, in a stealth way, like by hacking or taking some cables out or something. So these are very hard uh, to get rid of. Oops. So. Okay, so you can see that in the minimap there is a red uh, airplane or a drone. So when that thing is closed, you get a you get a notification that you need to hide for uh, like a ten seconds or so. So now it's passing right over us. Usually you can see it and it makes a, n a noise of a drone passing by. I cannot see it right now. Again, these things happen randomly. So if you're trying to make a mission in a stealth way, they can really mess things up for you. Right, so. Here's what we're gonna do. This is the stealthiest way you can get rid of the drones. You can use uh, the EMP grenades, like uh, the other drone we saw that was flying. But things are a bit more complicated with these uh, drone with the drone tanks. They're very they're harder to. They don't just they don't just blow up when you throw the EMP. They actually recover after a few seconds and they kill you. Gear level 60, dangerous area. So again, this is a bit silly for a Ghost Recon game, but I'll just show you the, the stealthiest way you can uh, proceed if you want to uh, do it this way. You have to be very quick, very very precise, you don't have a lot of uh, leeway. So this is as close as we can go, we throw the EMP grenade, we have like 5 seconds to get very close to it, and we put the C4, we put two C4s on it, and then we run and make it explode before it has time to shoot. So this is the stealthiest way. <laughs> Again, it, it, 
it, it, it, it, did not it did not have time to call for backup or to raise an alarm, so this is the stealth way to do it. There's no way that you can go from above it or behind it to just pull circuits out and get rid of it. This is the, the only way I know of, at least. Just throw the EMP grenade and uh, fill it with explosive and then blow it up before it has time to recover and report to for uh, reinforcements. So there's another one here. Which way is it? Oh, it's looking towards here. Okay. So, if we throw the AMP grenade from here, we won't have time to get next to it and put the C4. So you have to go really close to it for the EMP thing uh, to work. So we're gonna go around from the water. Try to get like 10 meters close to it, at least 10 meters close to it. Without it seeing you. I think a little closer. Okay, this is good enough. So we throw the AMP grenade. And immediately switch to C4. Put the C4 on it. One, two, might as well go three. And blow it up. Oh, it didn't blow it up. So now, sometimes it can uh, stay with a little uh, life. And you just get rid of it. Uh, if, if you're lucky, it, it'll be a little life. Otherwise, it needs a uh, to it needs a lot of uh, clips, a lot of mags, a lot of firepower to blow up. So it seems you need to put the C4 in the in the in, in the junctions. So you don't not just on top of it. So these things are guarding this uh, little house here. There's a P90 here. Some syringes. Skill credits. So this is like a little uh, loot house, and uh, usually the more people around guarding these loot places, the better the loot inside. So this is the loot element of the game. But again, you don't really have to do this. Okay, I think we're okay. Uh, so we need to talk to the other guy, back on Erewhon, on the base of operations. Let's go back. Before we go, I also want to show you some basic stuff about the game. That you might that might be of interest to you if you're thinking of buying this game, like how the gunsmith works and stuff like that. So we're back at the base. Where is that guy? Don't lead Sentinel back here. Lives are All right, he's over there. This is the end uh, of the mission. You just uh, debrief the guy that gave you the mission to begin with. I'm not gonna play the entire dialogue, just a, a basic part and get rid of it. Mads, I have some bad news. Cal didn't make it. I figured his looks damn. Yeah. Found us. Now let me. I also found okay, Let's fast forward everything. Okay. So that is mission completed. Right, so let's check the missions again. So there are different kinds of missions. It has the faction missions that this guy gives you. Uh, there are the um, PvP missions, these are more like challenges, like kill 10 people. And these are the missions for the storyline, right? This is the beta, we cannot play m uh, any others here. So what we just did, I think, was one of the side missions from the main storyline. So uh, let's see a bit ab uh, about the gun. So you can carry two main guns and a pistol on you, and you can... Uh, you can change uh, the magazine, put an extended magazine, uh, you can change the sights that it has. It has uh, quite a few available, but usually you will just end up using the red dot, to be honest. Also, you can uh, change the paint of the gun, either of the whole gun, or, or change, uh, put different paint to different components. So here the whole gun is uh, blue, but then we change the color of the silencer. Let's see, you can change even the color of the sight on top. Right, so you can make a lot of uh, funky guns depending on your mood at the time. Let's make the mag a different color, so its component a different color. You can personalize it. Of course, if you want it realistic, you just put the you just make it like this, like a camo on the basic ones, and leave the attachments black. It looks better. And you can see here the uh, the gear has a gear level next to it. So the higher the level, the more bullets you can take. But if you play stealth, you don't care. And here in the lower left part, 
uh, you have some uh, passive items like uh, drinking water or binoculars or the health and on top you have some um, active uh, I call them items like a diversion lure you have a bridge torch which is pretty cool I haven't found a way to use it <laughs> yet you can open holes in the uh, fences you have some perks with you and some uh, overall skills now it gets a little complicated here so uh, you can choose which sort of class to get so in, there are uh, four classes there's a sharpshooter which is a sniper which has lower breath there's a panther which is uh, more of a cloak and dagger kind of thing with fa fast movement and uh, stealth movement there's a, the assault guy which is the one man army that has more aggressive skills and there's the medic so it's sort of meant to be played with four people and it's person to complement the other guys especially in pvp and you have some basic skills that you unlock now it is very hard to unlock this so even from when you begin the game you can unlock most of the basic stuff like uh, night vision and and uh, oh this is a nice one is a sync shot so if you're playing solo you can have the drone uh, shoot a guy when you're shooting another guy in the same time and it's uh, pretty straightforward so you can see each circle has its own uh, name depending on the type of the um, of the skills you're upgrading it's straightforward uh, again, uh, also its skill has a different level, so you, if you want to be the sniper, you can uh, increase the sniper skill level up to, I think, uh, up 10 or 20 levels, and each time you increase the levels based on doing stupid little challenges, it gives you, it gives you little uh, rewards. Okay, uh, so I think I showed you most of most parts. Uh, again, uh, the, play, uh, the game is a bit of a looter game. Uh, since the changes they made, but you can play it stealth. Oh, uh, one last thing. So, in the bivouacs, and the, when you rest, you have some options. So, before starting a mission, you can do this. I think you have uh, three different options. You can either mix. <laughs> it's fun. In the beginning, he looks at you with a weird uh, face. So, you can do some preparations. That's how it calls it. You can choose which kind of buff you want to have. So if you want, you can increase the, your endurance or increase your stamina. So if we click the stamina thing, he just do some stupid exercises. And then for the, for the rest, uh, 60 minutes, I think, he has some bonus for the stamina. Yeah, plus 10% stamina for 60 minutes. Or if you can choose ma make it that he's more hydrated or stuff like that. You can also choose the classes when you're in the, in the camp. And uh, different classes can uh, automatically choose different weapons, so you can put some uh, default uh, presets just to make things quicker. Let's see what else. Is that all the thing you can do here? Let me check. Yeah, okay. And uh, lastly, you can uh, craft stuff. So uh, let, let's say we want to craft some C4. This is uh, from materials that you loot around the game, so you you need some of the explosive materials. So this is. Uh, salt pepper used for gunpowder so you just use one of the explosive material to make one c4 so it's not very realistic it it just gives you an option to craft stuff and you can also craft uh, stuff to eat and to drink like with this uh, dexterity potion whatever this is <laughs> it increases the reload speed so you can craft that uh, ah okay so there's also a garage so you can buy different uh, vehicles and you click the vehicle and then it w it is waiting for you. And finally, you can choose how long you want to wait on the campsite if you want to play in the different time of day. So if you click in the morning, you wait until the sun goes up. Okay, so I hope you got a good uh, idea of what to expect from the new Ghost Recon game. I'll probably upload more stealth missions in the future. See you in the next video.